What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. As you can see, we got a pretty big project ahead of us today. I ordered five yards of mason sand from my local landscape supply company and we're going to do a leveling project on the lawn. Now according to my Bermuda maintenance calendar that I put out about a month ago, this is a little early in the season for a leveling project, but I'm going to do it for two reasons. One, next week we have five days of 90 plus degree weather in our 10 day forecast. And two, my brother came down for the weekend, so I have some free labor and I'm going to take advantage of it. Also, a big shout out to my buddy Willie G, who volunteered to be a shovel man for this weekend's leveling project. But before we get into the leveling project, I do want to show you guys the four-week post-scalp update. We're not quite four weeks, actually a few days out, but this is as close as we're going to get since the yard's about to be covered in sand. I just wanted to jump in right here and let y'all know that this is a pretty long video, so I added chapters in the description for your viewing pleasure. All right, here's what the front yard looks like. 100% green up. Put a mow on it this morning. Vertical stripes back and forth, as you can see here looking pretty sharp. Here's a close-up of what the grass looks like. I'm mowing at a half an inch and this is less than four weeks from when we scalp so it's filled in nicely. Now we make our way on over to the side yard over here and again you can see some vertical stripes and a pretty deep dark green color. Now I have put two granular applications of the green tracks out and I've put down about 0.3 pounds of nitrogen in each application so far. So in total, the yard might have had 0.6 or 0.7 pounds of nitrogen since the scalp. And last but not least, here is the backyard update. You can see right here in the middle, those spots have filled in a little bit. I do think the little experiment with the potting soil did speed up the recovery a little bit. Now, unfortunately, they won't be able to make a full recovery before they're covered in sand. But, you know, I'd much rather have the help of my brother and my buddy than try to knock this whole sand project out by myself one weekend later when it's hotter. So I'll take what I can get. And then over here on the side by the house, we are filling in as well. Now that area still doesn't get nearly as much sun as the rest of the yard, particularly over here by the fence line. But you can see we're striping up nicely. Put some single doubles down this morning and unfortunately, it's about to get turned into a beach. If you're planning on doing a leveling project this year, let me know when in the comment section below. We're gonna set up the leveling project by just going over the materials and the tools I'm gonna to use in order to get the project done. The most obvious material you're gonna need is the sand itself. Now you can actually go straight sand like I did. This is my third leveling project or you can get a sand and compost or sand and topsoil mix. I like going straight sand because the sand actually has really good leveling properties and it's going to keep its structural integrity over time. But if you go compost or topsoil, it will eventually break down uh, back into the ruts that you're trying to level in the first place. So I recommend going straight sand. Now a lot of people are scared to put down straight sand on their lawns because they've heard that it turns your clay soil into concrete. And in my experience, that's just not true. It's gonna go through the sand in about a month and then you're gonna forget that the sand was really ever there until the next time you do a leveling project. When it comes to how much sand you actually need, the rule of thumb is to go with one yard of sand per thousand square feet of lawn. Now I have about 4,200 square feet of lawn, so I actually got five yards of sand, so I went a little bit heavy, but really last year I got seven yards of sand, so this is actually a lighter project than I did last year. Really, if you have more leveling to do, if you have a lot more holes and ruts in your yard, you can go heavier, and if your yard is already pretty level, then you can go lighter. As far as which sand to actually pick from your landscaping company, I would suggest going with a mason sand. Mason sand is super fine, and you want to make sure that it's screened as well. Uh, the reason it needs to be screened, especially if you use a real mower like I do, is you want to make sure that there's not a lot of small pebbles and rocks in the sand because those rocks can really mess up the reel on your mower. Another step that you can do before you actually start the leveling is to core aerate. Now I actually own this core aerator. I got it off of uh, Facebook Marketplace last year during the COVID break. Um, I know most people don't own a core aerator that they just have at their disposal, but you can definitely rent one at your local Home Depot or Lowe's or any place like that. 
So if you get it for a few hours, it probably runs you maybe 60, 70 bucks. When you're core aerating, you're pulling out plugs from the turf. I think this one goes down maybe three inches deep. So you're pulling out three inch plugs from the turf. And then when those plugs are pulled out, it leaves a hole. And when we put the sand on it after when we're actually leveling, that sand is going to mix better with your existing soil. Now I'm just going to walk through some of the products that I use to actually do the leveling project itself. So to move the sand around to the different parts of the yard, I use a gorilla cart. Um, this gorilla cart is really handy. It holds a good amount of sand. You can actually get them even bigger than this. Uh, it's got pneumatic tires and it's got this little lift right here that allows me to dump the sand so it just makes transporting the sand really easy. And then once you've actually moved the sand around all over your lawn, it's going to be in these little piles all over the place. So I would suggest getting a rake, something like this. Uh, this is a landscaping rake. I think it's 36 inches uh, down here at the end. And I picked this one up at Lowe's, and I just use it to push the piles out. So I'm not actually using this uh, tool to do the leveling, but I'm just using it to knock my little piles down. Now this actually is a more specialized piece of equipment. It's called a lawn leveling rake, and that's exactly what it does. It is used for lawn leveling. You'll see it in action here in a little bit, but basically the end there is 30 inches long, and you're just going to use it to do smaller leveling jobs in your yard. And then the heavy hitter of the group, so this is going to be used for the brunt of the work, is just the field drag. And this is exactly like what you would see at a baseball field. Um, I got it off of Amazon. I'll leave links to all this stuff in the description box below if you're interested in it. Um, but basically, I actually added this PVC pipe to it so I could stand inside of it. But I just put it on my waist like this, and I walk with it around the yard. Um, now, I will say that I actually think I would have preferred to have gotten the 3 foot by 3 foot version of this. This one is actually 3 foot by 5 foot, I believe. Um, but I do really don't need it to be that wide for my lawn. If you have a larger lawn, you might want to go with the wider drag. Um, but if you have anywhere from like a 5 to 8,000 square foot lawn, I actually think I would recommend the 3 by 3 foot drag. Okay, so now that we've gone over the steps, I'm actually going to start by aerating. You'll notice that before I aerated, I did mark where all my sprinkler heads were with these little orange flags here. Again, if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description below. But that's just so you don't run over your sprinkler heads. just finished aerating the entire lawn we're here in the backyard now the next thing you guys might ask is do we need to get rid of the plugs that we pulled with the aerator now I don't personally get rid of the plugs and here's why like I told y'all this is my third time doing a sand leveling project on my lawn so the cores that I'm pulling personally are just mostly sand at this point so whenever I run the level over them after they've already been pulled, they pretty much just disintegrate. So if you put any pressure on them, they break apart. Okay, so that's why I don't do it. Now, if you just have clay plugs lying around in your lawn, you might want to consider doing it. But 
I don't personally do it just because it's going to take a while for that sand to disappear anyway and for the grass to come all the way through the sand. And by the time that happens, most of these plugs will be gone regardless. So I think it's just an extra kind of unneeded step, but that's because I do it when I level. Um, you might not think so. I know this is a leveling video, but since we aerated, I just want to point out some of the other positive aspects of aerating. First of all, it breaks up compact soil. So if you have very hard clay soil, it does a good job breaking it up. Um, it makes the holes in the ground. So these holes basically have direct access now to your root system. So if you have to put down any product that works better or that needs to be down in the root system anyway, uh, it's a good time to put down a product like that. Also, it makes it easier for things like water and nutrients and food and anything like that to work its way down into the soil as well. Um, because just it's easier access. There's a whole bunch of holes in your turf now. So aerating has all sorts of uh, positive benefits. You will hear some people also point out some negative benefits. Uh, some people think that it can poke holes in your pre-emergent barrier. I've never really had any extra problems with weeds after aerating personally, but just that information's out there. You, you'll hear some people say that. But for me personally, the benefits of aerating far outweigh any of the negative effects that you might see. All right, so we got the aerating out of the way and pulled the flags up so we can finally break into the sand right here. I want to tell you all that whenever you are leveling, your real goal isn't really to make your lawn level. You want to keep whatever grade that you already have on your lawn so your yard won't flood. But what you're really trying to do is make your yard flat. And making your yard flat obviously makes mowing easier uh, but it also prevents scalping and scalping really makes your lawn look bad when you cut it so scalping is when you cut too far down into the grass and brown shows and you don't want that to happen so leveling your lawn okay doing one of these leveling projects with sand is going to prevent a lot of those scalp marks from an uneven lawn so what we're going to do right now is just keep filling up the gorilla cart over and over again and then dumping it in the lawn and i'm going to try to spread it out as evenly as possible and i'm just going to keep going over here in front of me uh, I'm still gonna do the side yard and the backyard tonight I'm just not gonna put that on film for time's sake and because it's about to be dark anyway so probably won't be able to get too great of a video of that anyway but I'll come back on tomorrow and we'll jump on when we are ready to actually level these piles out here's what all the piles look like after I got them all spread out in the front and I will see y'all tomorrow Well, it is the next morning, but unfortunately, we're getting exactly what you don't want, at least before you spread out the sand, and that's some precipitation. So, probably going to let it finish raining, and hopefully it doesn't rain too much so the piles don't get too wet, and then just use that landscaping rake that I showed you yesterday to 
thin them out a little bit and then hopefully they'll dry out throughout the day and we can do a little spreading later. Alright, the rain has subsided and we even got a little sun out. Hopefully it heats up a little bit and these sand piles can dry out a little bit. And we are going to start pushing them over with a rake so they can thin out a little bit so it's easier and faster for them to dry. Let's see if we can get this one done a little faster. Much better. Okay, y'all, we got all the sand spread out in the yard now. We're just going to let the sun do its magic and hopefully dry it out a little bit. And then later, after we eat a little lunch and stuff like that, we'll come back out here and we'll start actually leveling the sand. Okay, it's a few hours later, so now we're going to use the drag and we're just going to level out the sand as much as we can with the drag and then we'll pull out the level rake and then we'll kind of try to work the sand more into the ground but now basically it's just going to be drag level rake drag level rake drag level rake until we're happy with where it's at All right, we just finished using the mat drag and dragged the front, side, and backyards. Uh, there's not really much else we can do tonight, so I'm going to set the sprinklers to run. Hopefully when we wake up tomorrow, we'll see that a lot of the sand has worked its way down underneath the canopy, and there will be a lot less sand. You'll be surprised how, uh, how much sand actually works its way into the soil uh, just from a little water. And then tomorrow, we're just going to drag some more, and then hopefully we'll be able to bring out the leveling rake. What's up, y'all? It's actually Wednesday night right now, so I actually had a few-day hiatus from filming. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a teacher and a coach. So right now, we have state testing, and we're right in the thick of district baseball, and I've actually got a JV tournament this weekend. So a lot of uh, stuff on my plate right now, but definitely not forgetting about the yard. And I wanted to show y'all an update. Uh, before I got too busy later on in the week. 
Here's the front yard. You can see that we've lost a pretty good amount of sand. So, so far what we've done is just use the drag mat and then I've watered twice. And every time after I water, I let the sand get completely dry again. And then I come back out with the drag mat and I'm just working it into the turf. Um, I feel like after I water tonight and let it dry out completely, and I think it will by tomorrow night because we're going to be in the mid 90s tomorrow. I think after that happens, I'll be able to get that level rake out and really start working this sand into the canopy. And that'll just make the sand be able to disappear that much faster. Here's a look at the side yard. Again, you can tell that we've lost quite a bit of sand and I'm not going to waste much more time. I'm going to go ahead and show you the backyard. Okay, and here's the backyard. Now the backyard has lost more sand than the front or the side. I think the main reason that is, is that the backyard was the most unleveled to begin with. And I'm pretty sure that I just put down a thinner coat of sand back here in the first place. So if you mix that in with getting watered, and then I actually have that impact sprinkler back here as well, that's why you see the most progress as far as the sand working into the canopy. The backyard actually does a really good job of illustrating what your sand is going to look like after it's settled. When you see more sand in spots like this and this, and then back here in the corner, uh, right there, those places are lower. So the sand is thicker and it's going to disappear more slowly. And it's going to take the grass longer to grow through in those areas. So that's exactly what it's going to look like in your lower spots. You're going to see more sand. In the spots that are higher anyway, the sand is going to disappear more quickly and that grass is going to poke through faster. So I'm about to go back to the garage and set the irrigation system to probably put down about a half inch of water and then hopefully it all dries by tomorrow night and I'm able to get back out here and film a little bit and show you guys the progress of what it looks like tomorrow night. What's up y'all? It's Thursday evening. I watered last night. I already showed you what it looked like on Wednesday. So now I'm going to give you a little tour of what it looks like on Thursday and then you're going to get to see the level rake in action and I think that I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up after I show you this because we're already getting up there uh, with the length of this video but I wanted to make sure that you could see it in action because I plan on putting this video out on Sunday but I'm actually busy all day tomorrow and all day Saturday so this might be my last chance okay so here's the front yard all right we've already got the sand worked down quite a bit and I'm going to work it down even more with the level rake same story with the side yard here as we can see we've worked in the sand quite a bit and I'm just going to get after it with the level rake and see how much more I can get worked down into the soil and once again in the backyard we've lost a lot of the sand you can still see the low spots over here but overall we're like five days post scalp so it's looking pretty good all right so I finally have the level rake out here now I've found with my little bit of experience with this thing that it's actually better when the sand is more worked down or if you just have a lighter coat of sand on the lawn when I had the really thick sand on the lawn right after I spread it out I think the drag was a lot better but this thing really performs better when it actually has contact with the surface so right now we actually have contact you can see the grass poking through on each side and all you're going to do is get down here at the end and then you're just sliding it across the lawn and as you're sliding it that sand is working its way further down into the soil so i think i'm going to run this over the rest of the lawn and i'm going to show that to y'all on a time lapse
I think I'm going to go ahead and call it quits right here, guys. We are five days out on the leveling project, and I'm pretty sure I'm in a good spot. I've got most of the sand worked in, and I don't even think I'm going to need to run the level or the leveling rake over it anymore. I think it'll just kind of gradually uh, work its way into the canopy eventually. And don't worry, I'm definitely going to show you all updates, so I'm not going to leave you hanging there. I know that some of this equipment can get pretty expensive. So if I was doing a heavier sand leveling project, the equipment that I think is a necessity is the gorilla cart, a landscaping rake, obviously shovels to shovel it into the gorilla cart. And then if I'm choosing between the leveling rake and the drag on a heavier project, I personally think that the drag is the better option. If you like the video, please leave me a like. Make sure you subscribe below so you won't miss any of the updates. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you guys again next week. Lawn Insider, out.